one. One, one, one. Check. All right. So we are live. I'm just uh, we're just kind of chilling right now. Uh, we got a meeting that's starting at three o'clock. I don't know who's going to show up. I'm kind of hoping that uh, you know it's more than just one. So I got four. I got four other people that have uh, signed on to the the team over at the Nucleino platform. Uh, the links are in the description, of course, as always. And um, I'm excited to actually get some feedback from some people that that try and do this kind of work to make a living because they're the people that are going to make the biggest difference in terms of what actually happens with this project. I'll be honest. I, I, I've, I've tried my hand at Unreal Engine 4. I just I don't have the stability in my personal life to um, make it a thing because the person I live with who I won't be living with for, for a lot longer, it seems, um, refuses to allow me that uh, opportunity. So, um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. My son goes to school in the fall pretty soon here. And, um, you know, so that'll be a major distraction I won't have to worry about during the day, which will allow me to pursue any work that I really want at this point, which is what I'm really looking forward to. And when I say work, I don't mean like going to punch a clock somewhere because I say, fuck that. Um, I want to actually do something that's meaningful, you know, that ha is going to have an impact on society beyond making another man's bank account a little much, a little more big, you know, by my labor. So, anyhow, get these hands clean here. My, my medicine damn so we're just chilling here get this going we'll go into the unreal engine marketplace i think it's the first place we're going to go take a look at some of the assets that are available I really hope these guys are grabbing the free assets every month because that, that could make kind of a difference in some, th some aspects here long term. But that remains all to be seen, I guess. Come on, little buddies. There we go. There we go. That's what I want. I want a little bit of evacuation action going on. Going on, going on. Okay. Alrighty. So, let's go ahead and jump in the meeting. Go ahead and get with it, my brothers and sisters. Okay. Go ahead and join the meeting. Yeah, we don't need the camera. Check, check, check. 
Audio is working. That's beautiful. Go ahead and join the meeting now. Um, um, let's see if we have any any peeps that I might be able to recruit to, the, to not the channel but the developer meeting um, developer Live, live brothers. Who's live right now? A lot of music, music for work. A house, wow. Yeah, just chill music, man. Just. Chill music, bruh. Bruh, just chill music. Have a story? Yes. It has a really cool story, in my opinion. No gumdrop trees. This is not Candyland, I'm sorry. Um, looking at pictures of, of Peptos, there are no tree-like things besides organic structures, which, you know, I'm doing. Um, and we'll work on adding more of. Uh, he, Slingshot is an alien from 5YL that Fast Track is using. Check your DMs. Okay. Absolute. Aww, adorable. If you watch this, you will re redeem as a Ben 10 fan. Okay. This is a trick. This is a. a fuck you. Fuck you. I knew it. I, kn I said it was a trick before I watched it. Um, are you going to add Ben 10 aliens like Spitter or Sandbox? No. But I included Arctic Guana, which is kind of, kind of, of, of Ben 10K Alien. And I'm going to include Buzzshock, which is also kind of one. But, um, Sandbox never appeared, so I'm not going to include him because there's more iconic characters. And, um, and Spitter, uh, is not interesting. Flight 93 Demo, and I, I'm not going to read your name. Bro, if you are available, I'm running a meeting for devs on a new project. Um, no thank you. Uh, I'm, I want to work on this project, not another one. If you want to help with mine, cool. If you don't, then no. No Spitter, okay? Maybe Spitter has a cameo to talk about how horrible he is, but, um, besides that, no. Okay. Guys, I need you to stop talk- gonna be legit huge. Okay, I, I describe it, I guess. Or, I mean- I'd like to help out with feedback and that type of thing. I mean, but I don't want to work on another game. Yeah, don't do that FOMO thing, okay? I like my game. Yeah, describe it. Or also, yeah, your your title, your your username is making me skeptical skeptical of you. It's making me think <laughs> you're like a bad person. Yeah. Okay, I was right. <laughs> okay, Shadow, you're there. Come on, Shadow, ba ban him, please. Wow. Feedback will, uh, this is probably going to be my favorite, favorite game on Dreams. That's so nice. Feedback, he will, he will add feedback to. Yeah, get right, get right on top of him. Ban that guy. Ban him. I'm going to work on my project. I'm going to work on my project. My project. People are fucking weird, dude. I'm not even kidding the hell ban that guy for coming in here and being like hey man i got a meeting coming up we got a really good opportunity for you know a new project legit gonna be huge ban that guy ban him he's evil it's okay i don't need you to ban me i'll just i'll dip out it's all good i don't think you're a good person Jeez, what the fuck? Yeah, you just can't you can't pull people out of their 
out of their, uh, I don't know, whatever you call that shit. Ridiculous. Man, that guy. He's evil. I don't trust this person. Oh man, it's not going to be easy to get this thing off the ground. I, I'm I, I'm not even delusional about it. I'm excited at the prospects because I know that this is an idea that is going to resonate with people in terms of content. But ridiculous, just ridiculous. Uh, I'm gonna actually dip out for just a few minutes, but I'll be right back. Uh, let me get something up here on the screen. Light see here bro it's warm in this basement holy shit it is warm we don't get anything super significant Flight 93. I don't trust this guy. Yeah. Look at his name. I don't trust him. Get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving daily, now's the time. Getting close to Pearl Harbor Day, so. Yeah, nothing. When you say you have <laughs> nothing to it. My impression of what I know thus in Kandahar, the hope remains. Damn, that's not what I wanted. Oh, we'll save this one for sure. Pete Aldrich, service secretaries, distinguished officials of the Department Distinguished of Defense, criminals and thieves of the federal state. The uh, topic today is an adversary that poses a threat serious threat to security of the United States of America. This adversary is one of the world's last bastions of central planning, governs by dictating five-year plans, a 
single capital that attempts to impose its command across time zones, continents, oceans, and beyond. With brutal consistency, it stifles free thought, crushes new ideas, disrupts the defense of the United States, and places the lives of men and women in uniform at risk. Perhaps this adversary sounds like the former Soviet Union, but that enemy's gone. Our foes are more subtle and implacable today. You may think I'm describing one of the last decrepit dictators of the world, but their, too, their day, too, is almost past, and they cannot match the strength and size of this adversary. The adversary is closer to home. It's the Pentagon bureaucracy, not the people, but the processes. Not the civilians, but the systems. Not the men and women in uniform, but the uniformity of thought and action that we too often impose on them. In this building, despite the era of scarce resources, taxed by mounting threats, money disappears into duplicative duties, bloated bureaucracy, not because of greed, but gridlock. Innovation is stifled not by ill intent, but by institutional inertia. Just as we must transform America's military capability to meet changing threats, we must transform the way the department works and what it works on. We must build a department where each of the dedicated people here can apply their immense talents to defend America, where they have the resources, information, and freedom to perform. Our challenge is to transform not just the way we deter and defend, but the way we conduct our daily business. Let's make no mistake, the modernization of the Department of Defense is a matter of some urgency. In fact, it could be said that it's a matter of life and death, ultimately, every American. A new idea ignored may be the next threat overlooked. A person employed in a redundant task is one who could be countering terrorism or nuclear proliferation. Every dollar squandered on waste is one denied to the warfighter. That's why we're here today challenging us all to wage an all-out campaign to shift Pentagon's resources from bureaucracy to the battlefield, from tail to the tooth. We know the adversary, we know the threat, and with the same firmness of purpose that any effort against a determined adversary demands, we must get at it and stay at it. Some might ask, how in the world could the Secretary of Defense attack the Pentagon in front of its people? To them, I reply, I have no desire to attack the Pentagon. I want to liberate it. We need to save it from itself. The men and women of this department, civilians and militaries, are our allies, not our enemies. They, too, are fed up with bureaucracy. They, too, live with frustrations. I hear it every day. And I'll bet a dollar to a dime that they, too, want to fix it. In fact, I bet they even know how to fix it. And if asked, we'll get about the task of fixing it. And I'm asking. They know the taxpayers deserve better. Every dollar we spend was entrusted to us by a taxpayer who earned it by creating something of value with sweat and skill. A cashier in Chicago, a waitress in San Francisco. An average American family works an entire year to generate $6,000 in income taxes. Here we spill many times that amount every hour by duplication and by inattention. That's wrong. It's wrong because national defense depends on public trust, and trust in turn hinges on respect for the hardworking people of America and the tax dollars they earn. We need to respect them and their efforts. Waste drains resources from training and tanks, from infrastructure and intelligence, from helicopters and housing. Outdated systems crush ideas that could save a life. Redundant processes prevent us from adapting to evolving threats with the speed and agility that today's world demands. Above all, the shift from bureaucracy to the battlefield is a matter of national security. In this period of limited funds, we need every nickel, every good idea, every innovation, every effort to help modernize and transform the U.S. military. We must change for a simple reason. The world has, and we have not yet changed sufficiently. The clearest and most important transformation 
is from a bipolar Cold War world where threats were visible and predictable to one in which they arise from multiple sources, most of which are difficult to anticipate and many of which are impossible even to know today. Let there be no question. The 2.7 million people who wear our country's uniform, active, guard, and reserve, and the close to 700,000 more who support them in civilian attire comprise the finest military in the history of the world. They stand ready to face down any threat, any time, anywhere. But we must do more. We must develop and build weapons to deter those new threats. We must rebuild our infrastructure, which is in a very serious state of disrepair. Oh, really? And we must assure that Mr. the Rumsfeld. military service remains the high calling that will attract the very best. All this costs money. It costs more than we have. It demands agility, more than today's bureaucracy allows. Oh, really? That means we must recognize another transformation, the revolution in management, technology, and business practices. Successful modern businesses are leaner and less hierarchical than ever before. Oh, really? They reward innovation oh, and they do share they, information. Mr. Rumsfeld. They have to be nimble in the face of rapid change or they die. Or they die. Business enterprises die if they fail to oh, adapt. Oh, really? Mm. And the fact that they can fail and die is what provides the incentive to survive. But governments can't die. Oh, so really? We need to find other incentives. Oh, governments can't die. Free. How fucking convenient. The technology revolution convenient. has transformed organizations across the private sector. But not ours, not fully, not yet. We are, as they say, uh, tangled in our anchor chain. Our financial systems are decades old. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. We cannot share information from floor How to floor. How the fuck do you lose $2.3 trillion dollars in two thousand by 2,000? Or incompatible. Holy fuck. We maintain 20 to 25% more base infrastructure than we need to support our forces at an annual waste to taxpayers of some 3 to $4 billion. Fully half of our resources go to infrastructure and overhead. And in addition to draining resources from war fighting, these costly and outdated systems, procedures, and programs stifle innovation as well. A new idea must often survive the gauntlet of some 17 levels of bureaucracy to make it from a line officer's head to my desk. I have too much respect for a line officer to believe that we need 17 layers between us. Our business process and regulation seems to be engineered to prevent any mistake, and by so doing, they discourage any risk. But ours is a nation born of ideas and raised on improbability. And risk aversion is not America's ethic. And more important, it must not be ours. Those who fear danger do not volunteer to storm beaches and take hills, sail the seas, and conquer the skies. Now we must free you to take some of the same thoughtful, reasoned risks in the bureaucracy that the men and women in uniform do in battle. To that end, we're announcing today a series of steps the Department of Defense will take to sh shift our focus and our resources from bureaucracy to battlefield, from tail to tooth. Today's announcements from are tail first to many. tooth. We will launch others ourselves, and we will ask Congress for legislative help as well. We have, for example, asked Congress for permission to be begin the process of closing excess bases and consolidating the B-1 bomber force. But we have the ability and therefore the responsibility to reduce waste and improve operational efficiency on our own. Already we've made some progress. We've eliminated some 31 of the 72 acquisition related advisory boards. We now budget based on realistic estimates. We're improving the acquisition process. We're investing $400 million in public private partnerships for military housing. Many utility services to military installations will be privatized. We're tightening the requirements for other government agencies to reimburse us for detailees. And we're re reviewing to see whether we should suspend assignments where detailees are not fully reimbursed. 
We have committed $100 million for financial modernization, and we're establishing a defense business board to tap outside expertise as we move to improve the Department's business practices. We can be proud of this progress, but certainly not satisfied. To succeed, this effort demands personal and sustained attention at the highest levels of the Department. Therefore, it will be guided by the Senior Executive Council, including Under Secretary Pete Aldrich, Army Secretary Thomas White, Navy Secretary yeah. Gordon England, Go back and Air upstairs. Force Secretary Jim Roach. Go on. You're going to be leaving These leaders Go back are upstairs, experienced, please. talented, I, and I'm determined. I'm doing something. Go back upstairs. I am delighted Thank you. they are on our team. I would not want to try to stop them from what they came into this department to do. I expect them to be enormously successful. And Oh, I'm sure you do, Mr. Rumsfeld. I'm sure you do, Mr. Rumsfeld. Mr. Mr. Rumsfeld. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Are you serious? Okay. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Do 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 Bow, bow. Um, I'll go. We want five PM, my brothers and sisters. Set as premiere, Mongo Cinematic. Don't. All right, so let's see where we're at here with the meeting. So I'm in here. Everybody can hear me, hear me. Shatter dreams, shatter dreams. For you, I gotta run away, run away. Talking about. Mm -hmm. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll um, give some guys some time to get in here. Let me go on Fiverr here and see if I can uh, round up some some of them developers. I've talked to a lot of people on Fiverr, man. I'm not going to lie. I've talked to a lot of people. Meeting my brothers and sisters. Meeting. Meeting. Okay, boss, let me see. Meeting. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? 
Let's get the thumbs up there. We got one watching now, supposedly. It could be the AI bot. I am too busy. I am too busy. I am too busy. I am from Pakistan. Meeting. You are spamming in Fiverr. You are now banned. I have no doubt that that will happen to me at some point. Bro, straight up, I um, I went to go post the the link for the meeting for today for this project, and literally immediately I got banned. Immediately. Not accepting messages at this time. Ba -da 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 -da. Is anybody in here? Is anybody in here? Anybody? Anybody? So I got five guys that are actually on the dev in the dev project. Um, 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 can I, can I message these people or what the hell? Okay, cancel. I literally want to get their emails and email them and be like, where are you? We have a meeting. But this is, this, I guess this is just the way the world is, man. I don't know what else to say. Kinda messed up if you ask me. It's kinda messed up if you ask me. Yes. I think I got one guy who's been like, is the meeting now? 12 hours ago. Is the meeting now? I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> it's in 12 hours. Oh my gosh. Meeting. Oh, no. Oh, no, but still you message. Due to a religious event, my internet signals are gone for the whole day. But you just messaged me at 3.04. What are you talking about? Meeting. We have a meeting. We will not be able to help you, Mr. Mr. 9-11 Conspiracy Theorist. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. 
Where is everybody? That's what I want to know. Where is everybody? This is going to be a very difficult thing to accomplish. I know it. The biggest thing is having money. The biggest problem is knowing who can actually utilize that money and make it worth your money. That's the problem. Beep, 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 beep. Just checking my emails. What the heck? Oh, man. Why did it restart? That's annoying. Just restarts on its own. Just, just arbitrarily restarts for no damn reason. All right. We got somebody in the meeting. Admit. Yo, yo. Hello. 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 There's Rav in the house. Um, I think we want... Go ahead and open this up, start the meeting. Yo, yo. Did he drop out? What the heck? What the heck? Come on, bro. Okay, Unreal Engine, any day now. Yo, yo, what's up, man? Gonna make it. Yeah, this will be like herding cats for real. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I have been, I have not been scooping up the free stuff on uh, the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Free. Might as well scoop it up now. We'll just add it all to cart. Look at the young men's crying. 
Look at the young men dying. There's so much free material on this on this platform, bro. Crazy. Crazy that more people aren't actually really building um, reproductions of reality. All right. Uh, let's see here. Ba da ba 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 ba. Ba da ba 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. What's this twin motion? Pages and pages and pages and pages of assets for free. Man, what was going on here? Oh, send him code again. 312. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, Somebody, hello. Yo, yo. Hello, how are you? I'm all right, man. How are I you? I am fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too much noise. Too much static, too much noise. Are we all right now? No, fine. You're fine. All right, cool. Because there was just a bunch of static noise. So, uh, well, I'm I'm the the guy that started all this. So why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Okay, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, we have a uh, actually we are a team from. Okay. You are botting out hard, man. Static, static, static. Getting our signals jammed here or what? <laughs> oh, man. Hello. Um, I don't know what's going on with your audio, but it's it's like it's bad. That's better. CGI Buzz has left the meeting. Damn. <sighs> Yeah. 
if CGI buzz, like you still are getting a lot of static come through. Is it, is it your mic? Is it your setting? Like what's going on, bro? Uh, no, you can listen. Uh, well, now I can hear you, but before it was like <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, I think there's uh, some microphone problem. Okay. All right. Uh, no, I think, uh, no, I think okay, right? Yeah, now you're good. Now you're good. Now you're good. Okay. Uh, so you uh, you tell you t- told me that I want to introduce myself, right? I mean, the, first I uh, I have to introduce myself. In terms of what do you, what are you saying now? Slow 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 down just a little bit. I am saying that uh, the last uh, statement which you t- said me that uh, first I need to introduce introduce myself. Oh yeah, I said yeah, introduce yourself, man. Because okay, yeah. so so just so you know. I'm live streaming um, our meeting, right? And it's going to be archived on the channel so that people okay. know, so that people know. So like, just, you know, be aware of your surroundings, right? Uh, so that people okay. know that this is a legitimate project and it's not some fly by night operation. Like this is really happening. This is really going to get, this is really going to get done. And it's just a matter of how long it's going to take for uh, enough people to get on board for, you know the rest of the world to take notice so go on and go ahead and introduce yourself um I'm, there might be some other people sliding in here eventually okay uh so basically uh i am from pakistan and uh, i have a full team uh like developers like designers um uh, implementation and these all things we are uh, handling after all so we are making the games we are making the animations 3d animations okay and uh, and we are dealing like uh, freelancing clients also <clears throat> so you you're a part of a so, larger team is that what you're saying yes actually we have 15 to 20 people uh, i think it's normal it's not larger team so it's a, a normal team we have no 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 i meant i meant you're like it's not just you it's a larger team of not just one but how many did you say are yeah. on your team? 15 to 20 people we are uh, okay. now dealing actually. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. that sounds great. All right. All right. Have you uh, real, real quick, um I'll be I'll be firing questions at you just because I'm trying to get some feedback, you know. I know there's a little bit of a language barrier, cultural time barrier, <laughs> but but that's fine. I mean, I really I want this project to be decentralized to the point where it can't be shut down. You know, like if if somebody takes me out it can live on that. That's my goal. That that's where I want this to be because, because okay. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter where in the world you live, deception rules the day. You're being lied to about a whole lot of things and, and where you are locally, it's going to be a little bit different than where I am locally. But when you get up there in terms of the education system, the system of control that we call government, it ends up being the case that we're being lied to across the world about a whole lot of stuff. And this project is, uh, I would say this project is ground zero in the real culture war, where tr- where culture isn't just something that's fictional, that's made up, that people adapt and adopt, but it's actually, okay. culture is actually resonates with truth. And where we have a culture, we develop a culture as humanity that we don't want garbage, we don't want trash, we just want the truth. We want to be healthy. We want to be left alone. We want to live our lives okay. and not be bothered. You know, I think mm. that's what most people want at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, no matter where you are, you want to be left the heck alone. That's all that that's all that you care about. You want to do your business and be left alone. Yeah. You know, so. Um, so have you have you shared this project with your developer crew? Like what what's the sentiment? What's the reaction? What do they think about it? Okay, actually, uh, we are Asia-based country. So, basically, you know, in the Asia, uh, mostly people uh, uh, hand-to-mouth, you know, yeah. that one, yeah. that thing. That uh, we are not, uh, even the big companies uh, want the work when they have the money, actually. So, first, uh, I show the project. They are saying this is very easy for us. We can make this one. But actually, it will be happen when someone uh, try to fund us. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Not like that. We can that we that if we wait, 
wait wait for one month two months we make something and then we can wait then we will wait and after that something will happen so yeah. it's like hope but uh, actually uh, yes our team uh, is very excited for doing this project but actually they are not uh, like uh, because we we uh, we understand that uh, you need actually are raising the funds first so that uh, people will know first then they uh, involve in this one as you said then uh, they will uh, give some fund and then we'll start something like this yeah absolutely as, uh, as we think. absolutely absolutely and and here here's 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 the the hard fast truth about everything in the world is yeah. that is that people want to see receipts before they actually give you their hard earned life and that's what money represents. Money represents human energy. So before people are willing to give you their energy, yeah. they have to think they, that they're actually going to get something from it, right? Even if they like yeah. the idea, they're like, nah, 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 nah. It, this looks shady as hell. So uh, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that um, as a development uh, project, what we need to do is we need to have a website that, that, that shows real developers, right? It doesn't have to be everybody in the crew. But it has to show like names and faces of people that are in the project, and that, that can be verified. And then uh, what we'll what we'll have to show from there is we'll have to show like some kind of work that would be representative of what is going to go into the game. I'm not saying create something new. If you have material that you can recycle as a development crew, that would demonstrate that you know not only do you have the skill, but you know you know where this thing is actually going. Um, that's going to be, mm-hmm. that's going to be super important for, for the fundraising aspect of it. And I, myself, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to be out in the open too about it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing what I can to, to gather up that support from not only within the video game industry, but also outside of it, because as much as this is not so much a, a political activity, ultimately it's going to be viewed as controversial. It's going to be viewed in, um, as something that is has never been no one has ever done this before where where okay. the, the evidence is literally laid out in such a way where people discover it yeah. and it changes the way they actually view the event itself that's never really happened okay. before okay uh, i understand this one very clearly well lauren clear yeah. uh so first thing uh, which i saw in your website that you are you started this uh uh project or something like events uh, for making events like 2015 right am i right say that again slow down means uh, in the website you wrote that uh, you started uh, this kind of uh, animations or this kind of ideas from 2015 since 2015 um well i actually it was in um it wasn't 2015 But it was, I've only been, I've only, I came to the realization of what it is that needed to happen for this idea that I've had for a while. I've had this idea for a while. Um, Okay. As far as the game design goes and this and the subject matter for the most part. Um, And I, in the last few years, I've been focusing on the flight 93 aspect of it because I know that would be achievable within a short period of time and have it be highly polished at least as far as the gameplay and the visual uh, aspect is concerned. And, and um, okay. so, so where, where we're at right now, where I'm at right now in all this, is I think there's going to be like a version one and a version two. The version one is going to be real compact in terms of its development. It's going to focus on uh, inside of the airplane and then um, the, you know, and uh, maybe not even showing the, air, the airplane outside like not showing the airport very much at all in terms of, you know, the uh, the level creation and focusing it just on the inside of the aircraft and the, the player experience inside of the aircraft. And then with version two, there will be um, flashback stories of the characters as they make their way to their final destination. OK, so, for instance, the pilot, I was I was looking at a, the, one of the pilots the other day, yesterday or the day before, and I was laying out how we could have, uh, you know, obviously with the right amount of funding, we could have people interviewing family members and friends of these people that supposedly died on Flight 93. And, you know, if if their relatives or loved ones We could be recording the interview and then using some of the audio clips 
in sort of a flashback memory, you know, the, the person's on their way to do their job and they're thinking about their life outside of work. I mean, you know how that goes. Like when you're in between like things that you're doing for work, you're thinking about other stuff, man. You're thinking about your kids. You're thinking yeah. about your, your parents, your sick uncle, your cousin who just got into a major car wreck or, you know, like yeah. there's all kinds of stuff that you think about memories. You have flashbacks of your past. You think about stuff in the past. I mean, it's I, I, I want to flesh this out and make it be make it be something um, that is. uh how can I say this? That is is representative of real life, and and not through the lens of the media that's trying to control the narrative, but literally allowing this person's reality to be presented to the player in a way where they're invested in the outcome. Even if they can't control okay. the outcome, they're still invested in the outcome. And I, th I think, according to my count, we have 44. Um, let's see here. Uh, flight 93 uh, passengers. So I'm uh, if I don't know if you're looking at the live stream right now, but um, I've got the. The full list up, of, or it's the pictures of the crew and the passengers that supposedly died. This is alleged. Allegedly died on Flight 93. And um, we don't have any pictures of the, of the terrorists up, you know, for, for no reason at all, just for the fact that they didn't conveniently show up in a picture, a montage. But if you're looking at it now, we have 44 characters whose backstories need to be filled out. OK, we have 44 okay. different experiences. By, by the time we hit version two, there will be 44 distinct stories being told. In the lead okay. up to entering. Okay. The uh, OK, I understand. I understand yeah. these all things. Yeah. Uh, so now I want to ask you some things. The first question uh, is that that uh, how many people uh, is involved in this project? I mean, uh, well, if you if you go to the uh, the Nucleo um, project where it's where the where the game dev where the game develop, development document is being hosted right now, and where the the studio is essentially being uh, positioned as far as oh. like the central location, uh, there are five people, including myself, that have joined as members. Okay. Um, so these are your uh, colleagues, or uh, you are just uh, well. I'm uh, taking it's, from it's, it's, yeah. there, it's an open invitation. I mean, I have okay. the link. I have the link in all the videos. If if somebody wants to come on as a writer, if somebody wants to come on as a researcher, if somebody wants to come on and write music, if, you know what I'm saying? Like this 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 demo. Even though version one is going to be compact and confined to what happens inside the aircraft mm -hmm. and uh, the ultimate ending that takes place. Uh, by version two, my intention is to have a, a multiplayer with an economy to support the game through, you know, uh, uh, cosmetic customizations with a multiplayer experience where passengers and the crew fight the terrorists to try and save okay. the plane. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, yes, I understand this one. Yeah. So, what is your basically the department which you are working for? I mean, uh, are you a, a business developer or something designation? I am basically I want to uh, know about your designation. I mm. mean, uh, what is your, your experience for? Uh, well, my, <clears throat> my exp I, like I, okay. So, as far as my my development experience goes, uh, yeah. Well, I've been playing video games my entire life. So let me just be upfront about that. So okay. I have a, I have a strong okay. handle on what the end user wants to experience. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if so you, go on. What's your question? So you, you have uh, some business for the, you have some uh, kind of businessman or uh, you are doing some kind of job. Well, uh, I, for I, now. I'm, I'm a regular worker like most people. Okay. Oh. So I, I, you know, I've, okay. I've, 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 I've worked for other people my entire life and this is my first mm. attempt to break out of that vicious cycle and yes. create an opportunity for people I understand. Who, who are on yes. for on a platform like Fiverr is just rich with talent, and and the biggest the biggest uh, stumbling block to they're like it's like herding cats essentially unless you got milk 
or cat feed or, or some kibble that you can throw down in front of them and get them to come yeah. to, to where you're at so that they can see that there's yeah. a benefit in it for them. And if they just would put in just a little bit of effort, um, yeah. you know, if, I, I want to hire everybody off Fiverr. I don't even want to worry about getting a professional, you know, developer from some big student. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to worry about that. I want to get people off of Fiverr that are, are just regular people trying to make a living, but are insanely talented at what they do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the fact that Fiverr yes. is such a diverse community in terms of where people live and, and, you know, and all that, all that, that lends itself even better to this thing because what, what people ultimately the experience that people will have in this game is going to resonate across the whole world. Regardless of, yeah. of where you come from, and most of the people, most of the people that supposedly died on Flight 93, were white and black, and were American. But that doesn't mm. matter once you understand that they have families, that they had aspirations, they had dreams, they had goals, they had plans for the future. Just like everybody else, man. Just like yeah. everybody else, and. And and this 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 demo is meant to set up the structure for the um, the full experience, which is going to be about nine eleven in total. And then it goes beyond that. You know, I I, I think I mentioned uh, in a comment to one guy who said that the the information, the whole of information, like the depth the depth of the information is too deep to actually you know fully implement into a game. And I disagree with you because. It's it's it functions kind of like a live service. When you have fleshed out the experience completely, you don't need to really work on it anymore. And then people will go in and they'll have their experience, and and then they'll leave that experience with a a, a refreshed view of the event itself. That that's the goal, you know. Put your normalcy biases aside and experience what it was like for the pilot to make his walk to the plane. To, to, to you know to greet the passengers to, to do the things that pilots do and then to have allegedly you know four men with box cutters take over the plane and ultimately crash it you know what I'm saying uh, or, or yes. like or like if you're the old lady because like before 911 there was a lot more leniency about what you could bring on the plane so like in the multiplayer, well, let's let's start first with the single player experience. The single player experience is going to be you're injected into one of these 44 characters. In version one, you're injected into one of these 44 characters. You're going to have a carry on bag. You're going to have things, you know, that you can you can look through, like uh, the stuff you can explore. You can pull out the, the person's wallet and you can look through their wallet and you can see their identification that they carried on the plane with them. Like there's going to be so many little details that go into the characters that everybody that plays this game that, that experiences this demo is going to want to play through every single character. They're going to want to see, you yeah. know, what exactly was happening with this person when this all went down. And then what happens is, OK, so you have a carry on bag. Now, four men with box cutters are trying to take over and hijack the plane. Well, supposedly they all fought back. Well, what the hell did they use for weapons? Right? Did they roll up a, a, a magazine and try to fight off? Excuse me, I hit myself in the face with the mic. Try to fight off a guy with a, a, a blade? You know what I'm saying? Like, what did they do to fight back? That's the great mystery that the game will help fill in. In my view. Um, so there's that aspect of it. And then, like I said, you know, when we get and, and then, uh, you know, there will be a few different iterations of this thing. Um, oh, did my guy drop out? Oh, I think he did. Well, anyways, we're still live, so he'll 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 pop back in when he wants to if he does. Um, so then th there there will be a scenario, for instance, where um, the plane gets shot down. Because if you look at the official story and you look at what was evidenced in uh, the Shanksville, the Shanksville, Pennsylvania field where the plane went down, you're going to see there's not a whole lot of evidence to support that a plane literally crashed there in the plane looking shape that the, the ground took. It was literally a field of debris. 
which does not happen in a plane crash. In a plane crash, there is a, a, a large chunk of the plane that sticks together typically, you know, and, um, you know, you don't have a wide field of debris unless there was a bomb or a gigantic explosion in the sky that would have blown the plane apart and spread the debris over a wide area. So, so that's, that's also an element of this experience is that people will be able to experience what it would have been like to have the plane shot down as you're trying to take it back from the hijackers. So I hope uh, my friend CGI can get back in. I don't know what happened. Uh, could be having internet issues. Again, this is a a diverse crowd that I'm trying to draw from because I don't want this to be a uh, centralized thing that can just be easily stopped you know, by taking out one person. I'm not going for that at all. So there will be some fail-safes I'm going to have to set up here just in the case that something happens to me that other people can take the ball and can run with it. Um I don't know where my friend went here. Let's see. Activities. No. Info. I don't know where he went. Was he my guy on Fiverr who was trying to get in? Uh... Huh. All right. Well, I was hoping to hear more about his team and what all they think they would be able to do. I mean, I don't need 15 people putting their faces on a website to show that there's a development team behind this project. But, um, you know, I'm thinking like five, maybe six of the the most, you know, talented people or or the you know the five or six guys that are kind of that take the lead on things and and try to see things uh work well together okay 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 that's fine uh man i wish i could message all these people on here like kind of really easy but i don't know if it's really gonna be a possibility Um, so, but bro, he says you have conversational English. What do you mean? You can't, you can't, you don't have a conversational level of English. Then why, why you got that on there, dude? Come on now. Come on, bro. English, you're fluent in English. I don't understand. I don't understand why, why some of these people think the way they do, but they do. <laughs> Um. Well, what I would say is uh, for anybody who happens to be tuning in now, and I don't know if there are. Let me go check. Let me check here. Where is my information? It is hot in this basement. Holy cow. I got some mining equipment running now, fully, fully blast, and it is hot. Woo! It is hot up in here. Um, let's see. All right. Well, I don't know. It says we got one watching now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so let me let me uh. Let me do my best. I don't want to. I don't want to just go on and on and on and on because it's not necessary. Um, so, if you're interested in this project, where are we at time wise? Let me go back here. Let's see what time. What time are we at? Oh, I started streaming 70 minutes ago. Oh shit! I'll have to chop this up. So, if you're interested in this project and you want to get in. Obviously, you gotta. You need to go to the links below. You should. You, you know. You should send me an email if you can. Um, 
the emails flight 93 demo at gmail.com you'll want to you know check out the fundraiser link because this is going to be important man i mean if we can get people from all over the world to donate to this project it, it, it's going to be amazing. It's, it's really going to be amazing. You can join the project at the new Clino um, link. It says join.nuclino.com, Revisionist Games. That's the name of the studio. Um, obviously, I think we're going to be doing more of these sort of meet and greets and uh, introducing the developers who wish to be a part of the project. Um, so there's that now, let me, let me, let me lay out the vision for this. Okay. So version one of this project is going to be essentially focused on, you know, entering the aircraft from, um, the on ramp or the ramp, you know, the ramp down to the door for the plane. So it'll just open up with you walking into the aircraft you know, whether you're the pilot or the stewardesses or the uh, flight attendants, I should be say correctly, um, uh, passengers, the terrorists, you know, all that normal stuff. And so so th and this will be real time. So there's not going to be any as, you know, um, forward moving time scales where, you know, a second is actually five seconds in real time. No, it's going to be real time. You're going to have the full experience everything from you know the initial process of getting seated and secured to the takeoff process and um you know there's going to be 44 different characters that people will be injected into in the single player experience and you know each character is going to have their own carry on stuff or not depending upon their situation um you know we're going to be basically re you're going to you the player is going to be able to experience what it's like for each individual person and where they were seated and, and uh, the things they brought on the plane and, and trying to fight back. It's going to be incredible. So obviously we're going to have the in version one, we're going to have the official story, which is the, the hijackers take control of the plane. They turn it around somehow and then eventually it crashes because the people on the plane decide to fight back. Okay. Then we're definitely going to have a second version where um, all those things take place, but the plane gets shot down over the fields of Pennsylvania. And then potentially in version two, there will be a third version of what happens, but it'll be more like it'll be more like uh, a storytelling experience. There will be less action necessarily involved it'll be more cons more uh overtly conspiratorial in um in in its narrative essentially whereas you know there's a possibility that those people actually you know that that flight 93 plane wasn't the actual plane that got shot down it was actually a decoy and those people were just basically whisked off by the state you know the united states government given new identities given new places to live basically they were a part of a psyop now i don't necessarily believe that to be true but these are all things that we're going to flesh out and explore for the game player for for the world to see is this something that's really possible is this all really possible so that's what we're going to do that's the plan um, let me make sure that my audio is still good. Yeah, my audio is still good. Awesome, awesome. Um, but these are 40 of the 44 characters. Now let me see if I can pull up the terrorists according to the state. Um, let's see here. F11. I don't know if my guy had just wanted to drop out. Maybe he heard enough. I don't know. Um, let's see, Flight 93, oh, here we go, ah, here are the terrorists, <sighs> I mean, I don't know, man, I don't know, I, it's, it's hard to know what to believe without actually having been there, honestly, that's kind of how I'm feeling about this, but, 
so version two is going to have uh, basically the, you know, at the gate, people waiting for the plane, having their memories, having their experiences, dealing with planning for the future, dealing with their past traumas, all, all, all that stuff. And that will all be fleshed out by the research on their background, interviewing people that knew them, all that kind of stuff. And, and it's getting late in the hour for a lot of this, this um, personal story research because as time goes forward, people forget stuff, man. I mean, there will be things there that we'll be able to utilize, not a problem in terms of um, you know, character development. But at the end of the day, it, the longer this takes, you know, the less there is going to be available in terms of people remembering accurately things about that particular person. I don't know what we're going to be able to dig up about firsthand witness testimony about these guys because... I mean, whether they were real or not is 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 a hundred percent hard to say, in terms of the the supposed name and the story and all that shit. Um, and then so we'll have that. Essentially, version two is going to have the multiplayer uh, experience also bolted on with uh, an in-game economy that will support the game with just basically a cosmetic customization. Um, there will be loot boxes filled with, you know, documents and video clips and audio clips and and um, just all kinds of cool things to help flesh out the story of Flight 93, essentially, at in this at this juncture. So version two is going to have the 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 waiting at the gate, the walking to the plane for the pilots and the crew. Um, we're going to have. The multiplayer experience in version two and then um, possibly possibly again if the funding is there we'll have that third narrative of maybe maybe the plane was switched somehow and it was just an basically an empty fuselage that was blown up over the fields of Pennsylvania in order to uh, promote this narrative of an you know an oncoming terrorist attack and then once version two is finished, right, and it's completed and it's all fleshed out and it's polished and there's no, like, serious bugs, you know, we'll probably have a couple people still working on it, like, you know, adding stuff as it comes up. Maybe maybe some people designated from the team that continues to work on the larger story of September 11th and the larger gameplay experience of September 11th and the set pieces and all that. Maybe a, once in a while those two or three guys will be pulled off their work on the main part of the game, the rest of it, and they'll go back to the demo and, and add things in that might have been discovered or, you know. My point is it's going to be as much of a live service as it's going to be a complete game at the end of the day when it's all said and done. No no gambling for for uh, cosmetics. Per, I mean, there might be some some cosmetic loot box type deals, but it's going to be with in-game currency only. You're not going to be able to buy it. The only things you'll be able to buy are like getting your face, um, basically, um, what's, what's the term where you take the picture and you transpose it into a 3D object, transpose it into a 3D object. Photogrammetry, you pay like maybe five bucks to have your face photogrammetrized. And, and and turned into a, a character that pops into the um, you know the multiplayer experience type deal. Um, let me think. What else? What else can we talk about here? Uh, we're gonna need levels created. Um, you know, through version two, we're gonna need levels created. We're gonna need sound effects. We're gonna need music. We're gonna need um, shader effects for like fire and blood and um you know we're gonna need the whole shebang for this production and it's gonna start small and it's gonna get bigger as time moves forward as the funding increases so that's where it's at um i i'm i have to say i'm happy to hear that there was some excitement in his team for the project because um you know they know they can get it done and that's fantastic. Um, CGI. I'm just going to call you CGI. Please send me an email to flight93demo at gmail.com. Maybe we can set up a uh, private uh, conference call 
with using Google again, and uh, maybe we can set up a private conference call with more of your team members that speak English, as, as at least as well as you do, and um, you know maybe we can talk a little bit more about what the possibilities are for you know putting in a little bit of effort up front to secure funding, because that's what it's going to take. I mean, I'm going to do what I can, but people are going to want to see receipts for the developers knowing that they're not some fly by night operation or that it's going to be some scam. And, and uh, I just want to reiterate, I'm going to be buying all of the production through Fiverr because I want to support the Fiverr platform. I think, I think it's a fantastic platform. If you want to develop a game and you'd want to develop it on a, on a reasonable budget, Fiverr is the place to go to because there's so much talent at Fiverr. It really is. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know what else to say at this point. Um, I need to get on the the document uh, hosted for the studio and the game. I need to set up a meeting with um, my boys here uh, that CGI has hooked in with, and um, and and I'm hoping that more people will see this and will get interested. If you're a voice actor, if you're a writer, if you're a researcher, if you do websites, if you do uh, influencer engagement, community engagement, if you do marketing, this project needs you. Okay? This project needs you. And I think I'll do, I'm going to end this and then I'll schedule a live stream for tonight and, and I'm going to talk about what this project needs this project needs people badly it really does i mean if, if this team could grow to a hundred i think we'd be able to kill it we just we'd be able to knock this thing out of the park um there's going to be huge opportunities that open up as a result of this project i'm telling you right now it's going to be massive it's going to be massive just just on the principle of what it's about alone. Just on that alone, it's going to be huge. I have no doubt in my mind. Um, so, yeah. I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, for anybody that's still in here, I hope that, you know, you, you, you get it now. And you understand what it's about. You understand what we're trying to do here. Um, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to recreate reality. Well... We are trying to recreate reality, but we're trying to make art imitate life. We're tr truly art imitating life to to exacting detail so that when the player gets done playing the game, they didn't waste their time. They actually have a better understanding of reality itself and uh, the things that have happened under the guise of state power, essentially. You know, that's. That's what it is, man. It's state power. State power is what causes all of this kind of crap to go down. In my view, based on what I've learned, based on what I know about human beings and what they're really about. It, it, for the most part, for the most part. Um, yeah, uh, stay tuned to the channel. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, check out all the links. They're very important, um, especially the fundraiser link. If you can help with that in any way whatsoever i would greatly appreciate it again i've got work to do on the administrative side of all this to try and get things moving so um if you've got some talent and you want to be a part of something that's never been done before this is the place this is the project okay i know some guys have their own games they're trying to create and all that and i get that i really appreciate that but this is going to be the most important video game ever made in the history of video games. Hands down, no questions. All right, CGI, if you're still there, shoot me an email. Uh, let's set up a time to have a meeting with uh, as many of your crew as we can to talk more about what, how we can get things facilitated in terms of um, letting people who would donate to the cause understand and know for real that this is a legitimate project and that uh, what they're going to be funding is the most important thing in video games. Hands down. I'm not going to say it again. All right. Um, this is Tom, and I'm out of here.